Hey everyone, it is Chase Chapel, and we're in week three, module two, cut low performance ads. We will be going over some very important information today. Here's what we're going to cover. How to identify high low performing ads, the protocols we must take before cutting ads, the round of cuts we must make to remove low performing ads, and the analysis of the winners and losers. So how do we identify a high low performing ad? Well. The first thing is ads that are more relevant, high performers, cost less and see more results. People prefer to see ads that are relevant to them. And when businesses show their ads to relevant audiences, they see better results. And then ads that are less relevant, low performers, cost more and they see less results. If people see irrelevant ads, that will raise cost at, as most people have not engaged with the ad. And when businesses show their ads to audiences, um, especially to the wrong audiences, they see the worst results. Some of the low performing ad ranking indicators that Facebook goes by is by using quality ranking, engagement rate ranking, and conversion rate ranking. So a lot of times you'll see below average, which is like bottom 20%, or you'll see bottom 35%, bottom 10%. Anytime you see something like that, it generally means that your ad is not performing in terms of Facebook standards. And this can affect your performance and your results. So it's important to make sure that you have um, average and above average on all of your ads. So that way um, you can get the most amount of reach because a lot of times Facebook will cap you if you don't have you know all above average or average and above. Um, and, and the more factors you have in the below average, that just means that you know that's that's room for improve improvements. So identifying a low performing ad, the first thing that we want to check for is results. If the ad has less results in terms of leads or purchases than all of the other ads with the similar amount spent. And that could be one indicator that it's not performing as well, because if it has less results and it has the similar amount spent to other ads that are um, getting results, then that probably means it's not doing well. The second thing is cost per result. The ad has the highest cost per result and has less results than most of the other ads. Now, what this means is, is if one of your ads have, you know, extremely high cost per results, and then all of your other ads have super low cost, and they also have more results than the one with the highest cost per result, then that probably means that, you know, that ad is also considered a low performer. So that's another indicator. The third thing is having a return on ad spend or ROI. Um, if the ad has a return on ad spend or ROI less than one X or an average that is lower than most, then that probably means that, you know, it's a low performer. Now, if you have um, an ad that's under a one X return, that means you're just losing money and it's it's a low performing ad. Um, but most cases, in order to determine if that is the case, um, it could make a comeback depending on when it was launched. So it must meet the criteria before you decide if it is a low performing ad. And the, and the criteria is at the bottom, um, $5 amount spent is how much you wanna make sure that the ad has on it. And then you also need to check two days, four days, and seven days because the return on ad spend, the cost per result, and the results change, you know, within two days, they change at the four day mark, they change at the seven day mark. Um, and you want to always wanna make sure that it's gone through the learning phase because during the learning phase, how that works is Facebook is testing different um, audience clusters inside that learning phase. So that means it's showing it to people who aren't relevant and it's showing it to people who are relevant. That's how the pixel decides whether or not um, who it's going to show the ad to moving forward. So you might select an audience, but the pixel's really you know selecting audiences within your audience to identify who's the best audience cluster to show this ad to. So it's intentionally gonna show it to audiences that aren't relevant, just so that way it can confirm that that is the audience that is not going to perform well. And the problem with that is it can end up making your results look like they're not performing. So it's important that you make sure that you go through the learning phase first before actually deciding whether or not you want to um, make any cuts depending on how your results look. The next thing is you want to check and make sure that each ad has 500 plus impressions. The reason you want that is because that's the that's the gold standard for um, how many impressions an ad needs before Facebook can decide whether or not it is um, a performing ad or a low performing ad. And so that's also the gold standard that we want to go by because we need at least you know 500 impressions to really identify whether or not you know out of all the people who have seen this, how many have interacted with it, how many results have we gotten, are the costs low, are the result volume high, is there quality, is there return on ad spend here. And if so, then we keep it, and if not, then we remove it. The next thing is we, we have protocols before cutting any ads. We don't just go in and just start removing ads you know, for the fun of it. We don't turn something off because we think it looks bad. There's, there's a protocol we must follow, and we have to do these protocols in order in order to identify and make sure that you know we're cutting ads that are within, this, within what our protocols are, and we're actually turning off ads that aren't performing well. 
So we're going to go through an example. So the first protocol is seven day time frame or greater. And the reason that it's seven day time frame or greater is because it takes seven days to go through the initial learning phase and you want to make sure you go through that phase before cutting anything for your ads. And so if it's greater than seven days, that also means you have enough data. And then also you want to check the seven day time frame because that's a good enough time frame for you to have enough results on there so you can be able to identify you know, what's performing and what's not. So is this within seven day time frame? Yes, it is. So all these ads are within the seven day time frame. So that means we can potentially cut them. The next thing we need to check for before we decide if we want to cut any ads is do all of these ads have $5 amount spent or more on them? And in this case, it looks like we have all the ads except for two. So two of the ads don't have $5 amount spent on them. So we cannot cut them under any circumstances. Those two ads that don't have $5 amount spent on them, it doesn't matter what the results say, um, we can't cut them. The next thing we need to check for is 500 plus impressions. So do all these ads have more than 500 plus impressions? Nope, only these ads do. So the next thing that we do is we want to make sure that ads that can potentially be cut, which are these, um, we can now look into and start asking our cutting questions. Now the, quite, the, now the rounds of cutting we'd go through are the first one is lowest result. So which ad has the lowest results and has the highest cost per result? And in this case, it is this ad. So this ad only has one result, has one lead, and it costs $31 per lead. Now if you look at the, now if you look at the, the results for all of the other ads, some of them have three, some of them have four, some of them have two. All of them have pretty much more than this one. And even the ones that do have one lead, the this one costs like way more. It's like, a, it's like three times more than any of the other ones with one lead. And so this one has the lowest results and has the highest cost per result. So this is pretty obvious that this ad is not performing well. It has the most amounts, it has a ton of money that's been spent on it compared to other ads, and it just has not as many leads. And it has a lot of impressions on it, so it's not a good ad. So what do we do? We end up cutting it, and that ad gets turned off. The next thing we check for is two times to three times higher average cost per result. So what that means is basically any ads that um, have, if you can fit the average, which is $8.18, which is eight. $8.18. Um, if you can fit this number inside of another ad's cost per result by two to three times, so you know if we were to double this, it would be like 16, 30 something, and it fits inside here. So that means you know this ad's not performing. So whatever the average is, if there's if there's another ad that's like two to three times higher than the average, that's likely meaning that it's not performing well. And every time we cut an ad that has a super high average, what ends up happening is it lowers our overall average which is good because that means our costs just keep getting lower and our results just keep getting better. So um, there's no other ads that I can see here that you know $8.18, if we were to multiply this you know, by two, it wouldn't fit in any of these. So the rest of these ads are safe in terms of this result. But if you have an ad that you know your average can fit inside another ad, then you likely wanna turn it off. Now the next thing you wanna check for is if there's any ads that have less than a 1x return on ad spend or ROI or the lowest average. So there could be a case where, you know, instead of turning off, um, you know, ads with less than a 1x return on ad spend, you might have ads that are like all in the 3x, 10x, 7x, and you like might have like um, really high return on ad spends. But the thing is like, you know, we're always improving. So if you have um, 10x return on ad spend, and then you have like a 9x return on ad spend, and then you have like an 8x return on ad spend, and then there's one ad that is at like a, let's say a 2x, then you might end up turning off that 2x return on ad spend. Even though it's generating results, you know, it's still considered a low performing ad out of, you know, a 10x and a 9x and an 8x. Like those are really high numbers. So why not, you know, increase your average by removing the 2x return on ad spend? Now, in most cases you could keep it, you know, because it's generating results, but if anything, if you're trying to improve performance, you would end up cutting a 2x return on ad spend if your overall average is much higher than that. So in this case, in order to identify low performer, it is going to be under a 1x or your lowest average. So is there any ads here that have less than a 1x return on ad spend? And yes, there are. And these are the ones that have less than a 1x. And so in this case, we would end up cutting these. And what you'll notice is they, these ads actually are all really similar. They're, they're almost identical to each other. 
And what's interesting about that is you'll notice after running your ads, there'll be like little groups of ads and clusters of ads that like, you know, end up being in last place altogether. Like there'll be a, like, they might all be the same. And that's like a clear identifier if they're a loser and vice versa as well. You'll start seeing ads that are performing well, all move towards the, the top. Like it's like literally like the saying goes like um, the, the cream rises to the top. So like, you know, you'll see your best ads start grouping together. You'll see your worst ads start grouping together. And that's when you know, like, you know, it's time to make some cuts. And in this case, it's pretty obvious. Like this, this ad wasn't performing well. Now it has, it has the most amount of results. Um, if we were to add up all these results, that's a pretty good amount, but they also cost more. So even though we're getting results on the ad, you know, it's still not worth it because we're losing money on these ads. Like these are the only ads that are actually losing money. The rest of these, you know, this one we're spending seven bucks, making 1.2. And then if, if you look at this ad, it, we're spending $2.83 and we've already gotten three results. Like on this ad, we got three results. We spent $13 and literally lost almost all the money on it. Like $13 cost per result and every single purchase we get from this one, it's, we literally lose almost 90% of the cash we spent. But on this ad, for every, for every result we get, we end up making an 89.64 X return. So, you know, that's outstanding for each, for each lead, we get an 89.64 X return on that. So like, that's, that's an amazing sign. So like when you compare that to an ad down here, it's quite obvious that these should be turned off because they're nowhere near performing as well as this one or these like this one, even out of four and you know, spending $4 and 57 cents, it's at a 1.57. Like even that's better than any of these. So that's how we go through our rounds of cutting. So we go through three rounds. The first round is lowest result and highest cost per result. And you know, we look for the ones that have the fewest amount of results and highest cost and we remove those. And then we look for the ads that have two to three times higher average cost per results and then we remove those. And then we look for the ones that have a return on ad spend of less than one or the overall lowest average. So like moving forward, if we were to do another round of cuts in the future, you know, all of our averages might be in the positive, but we might start cutting these lower numbers just because we want to keep increasing our average. Um, because we always want to keep increasing the return. That's always best. And that's also better for scaling because that shows that we have ads that are really going to do well. So this is our winners and losers analysis. Um, you can see that the losers are towards the bottom and you know, they have a, a less than a one return on ad spend. Their cost per results much higher than our winners, a lot higher. If we were to take that average, it would be sitting around like the $13 mark. The next thing we can see is that um, the results on them are not as high and we've shown them to way more people on the impressions. We, it, these ads have seen, have been shown to so many more people than the winners and the winners have just as much results, but have shown to less people. So that's a good sign. Um, and then also the winners have low costs and they have super high return on ad spends. Some of them are at an 89x per, per lead. And then there's like, you know, some that are at um, a 1.2. And, you know, during the next rounds of cuts, we'll probably end up, you know, cutting the ones that are um, in the one, one return because we want to raise our average. So the next thing is, you know, out of all these losers and winners, there is a clear indicator that we have a top performing ad and it's very scalable. So after the learning phase, you know, we've already seen an ad that in this case, we can identify pretty quickly that it's a number one top performing ad. Um, because not only is it have three results, which is just about the highest results out of all these other ads too, like they're all pretty much at three, um, but it also is the lowest cost. So you can see here, it's at $2.83, which is the lowest one. It has just about the highest results and the return on ad spend is at 89. Like, you know, the second one doesn't even come anywhere close to that. It's at a nine X and that's already a good number. So like imagine an 89 X return, like that's, that's huge. So like the fact that that's happening is, um, that means that's a really good ad. And if you see that, like that ad right there, there's really only like one of them out of all of these, like there might be a second one here and that's about it. And then like nothing really comes anywhere near, near this ad. So that means it's, you know, a top performing ad. And that means it, if, you know, if we're getting numbers like these, it's very scalable. So in this case, we'd end up, once we cut these losers, the spend is going to be, you know, moved over to the winners and the top performing ad and our averages are just going to get better. And not only that, we can actually start increasing the spend on this one because 
it's doing great. So the protocols before cutting any ads. These are the protocols we must follow. Um, you're able to download this sheet below the actual video, so that way you can actually go through this checklist. Before you even decide um, cutting any ads, you want to make sure that you know it's gone through the learning phase, it's at the seven day time frame or higher. And then you also want to check and see if you know the ad has $5 amount spent on it. And then you also want to make sure that it has greater than 500 impressions. Um, you need to make sure that all of these things are checked off because you know all the things that affect ads come down to time. You need time in order to identify if it's working or not. Um, because during the learning phase, like I said, um, the ads are being shown to different audience clusters and, and some of the audiences are intentionally being shown to people who aren't going to engage with it, but the pixel just needs to confirm that that is the case so it can show it to the correct people. So there is time, that is a factor in this. The second thing is the amount spent on this. If you don't have a um, you know, greater than $5 amount spent on it, that means you just don't have enough money you know, put towards your ads in order for you to really identify if they're working or not. Um, in most cases, you're gonna need more than $5 to really know if the ad's working. The next thing is 500 impressions. So if it has more than 500 impressions, that means it's been shown to enough people in Facebook's standard, which is the gold standard for how many um, people need to see an ad before deciding. And that's really allows us to identify, you know, all right, so there's been more than this many people who've seen it. It's been served to this many people. We've spent more than $5. It has more than a seven day time frame. Now we can decide whether or not it's worth cutting by going through our rounds of cuts. And we do that with these three steps. Um, these, this is the order we take in order to go through the cutting. The first one is removing the absolute worst ad. Usually this first round will always remove the worst ad, which is the lowest results and the highest cost per result. This is almost always the case for just cutting one ad. This is just, I mean, if anything, if you just remove your absolute worst ad, um, in most cases, the KPI is just gonna be so far off the edge that it's just like dead center obvious that that ad's not performing. And that's the first one we want to get rid of because that's going to help raise our overall average for results and it's going to help lower our overall average for um, cost. The next thing we want to look for is ads that have a two times to three times higher than the average cost per result across all of our ads. And this is usually going to remove a few more ads for us because we're going to see some ads that are, you know, almost double the cost of what our average is and triple the, co the cost. And we're going to start removing those. And the reason we remove higher cost is because that spend the moment we remove ads that are costing us a lot of money, that spend goes towards ads that are not costing a lot. And that means we get to reach more people, we get to get more results, um, and you know, it, it's a lot better that way because you can end up getting a lot more volume and you can end up you know, optimizing for quality moving forward after that. The next thing is we want to check for any ads that have a 1x return on ad spend or lower or an ROI lower. And if that's not the case because you don't have any ads that are less than a 1x, um, then you would just look towards your lowest average and you would start removing your lowest average ads. Now, before you do this, you must meet protocols before deciding if it is a low performing ad and cutting any ads. So you must check and see, you know, um, go through the protocols before you decide to cut any of the ads. And then you'll go through these rounds of cutting. This is also attached below the video, so feel free to download this so that way you can go through this checklist to start cutting your ads. So here's what we covered. We covered how to identify high, low performing ads, the protocols we must take before we decide to cut any ads, and that is imperative. You wanna make sure that you go through each protocol. The next thing is we went through a round of cuts we must make to remove low performing ads. And then we also went through analysis of the winners and the losers. So we broke down, you know, what did the winners look like? What did the losers look like? And even identified a top performing ad in this case. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next module.